Welcome back to Nightly Nonsense, where we make some sense out of the nonsense. We've already talked about it. We've been talking about it all week, right? The enemy wants to create a bunch of nonsense. I think fireworks are fantastic. Uh, it is amazing to me that actually what I look at and see is just these bright colors going off, all this stuff going off. Somebody has actually sat down and thought about the whole process. They've thought about every single firework, when it's going off, right? What it's going off with, right? They, they have order. I see, and I can see some nonsense, but somebody comes through and they can say like, hey, did you catch how this was? Let's make some order out of this nonsense. That's what God wants to do in your life today. Right? Like, hey, I know you're seeing nonsense, no value, no purpose, no plan, Whatever it is, God comes in and says, let me show you how I did all of this together. I have a trillion examples. My favorite example would take forever to tell you, actually. But I love it when you get to go back in time and you get to look step by step and go, holy cow. Right? What, what some people would look at as a bunch of chaos and a bunch of nonsense. Look at how God ordered every single step, every day. If, you, if we had a memory where we could actually go back and remember everything about every day, we'd be shocked. We'd be super shocked at what it is that God has done for us and how he has ordered our steps. Right? If you didn't happen to be in this place at this time, what would happen? Right? Lots of different things that God comes in and he orders. But the order... That order to the nonsense happens because you and I, we make a stand, right? We decide that we want freedom from the enemy. But freedom from the enemy means we need protection from the enemy. God's protection comes through multiple ways, but I'm going to just talk about two of the principles. The first one is submissiveness. You have to decide that God's way is better than your way. Talked about it this morning in counterculture. We were talking about the fact that guess what? Sometimes, sometimes we decide, right, that our ways are better than God's way. But God says, he states in the Bible, there's a way that seems right to man, but it leads to death. You could be on the best paved, nicest looking, greatest beneficial pathway to hell. You could be on that all of the resources you need, all of the people you need, all of the places, all of the things that you need, and you could be walking straight to hell, right? There's a way that seems right to us, but it leads to death. And God says his ways are not our ways. They're way higher than our ways. Super more beneficial for my life than my plans. But you have to decide that that's a truth. Lots of people saying it. Lots of people actually believe it, but they're not living it. Right? This whole believe thing, we talked about it last night in our Bible study at church. This whole believe thing is actional in nature. It's not just I state I believe that that is the color red. No, I, I, I actually live like it's the color red. Right? I use it like it's the color red. We actually have to live a lifestyle where we believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We believe, right, that his ways are not our ways. And we're going to be submissive to his ways. Right? God, right now, this is what I want more than anything in the world. What do you think? God says, wait. Submissiveness has us waiting Right? Submissiveness is part of it. The second part of it is actually doing it, which is obedience. Right? Those two things go together. There's no way to accomplish what God wants for you unless you submit yourself to him and then are obedient in what he tells you in that submissiveness. A lot of people hearing from God, God's telling them, hey, problems are coming. Stock up the refrigerator. They're submissive to God. They're, 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 they're willing to learn and listen and hear. But when they go to the grocery store, they just never get around to stocking up the refrigerator. They never get around to visiting the person. They never get around to writing the check. They never get around to doing any of these things. They're not obedient. 
Now you could say, well, you can't be submissive and not be obedient. Yeah, well, those two things go together. But there's a lot of times that you and I are submissive to the things of God, but we're not obedient. I know God's plan. I know his purpose. I'm going to pray, right? I'm submissive to him. Lord, help me out of this. I'm going to pray. But we're not obedient in what he tells us. So if you're going to draw a line in the sand and you want to be protected from the enemy, right? You want to be protected from the enemy, then you have to decide that my freedom comes through submissiveness and obedience to God. This isn't a momentarily thing where I want something, so I'm going to be submissive. Lots of people, we do that all the time. I want something from this person, so I'll say, okay, and I'll do whatever they want, but I'm expecting something in return, right? No, submissiveness and obedience is a full life thing. At every moment, I'm submitting myself to the will of God, what he wants, and I'm going to be obedient in that, even in the toughest of moments. So I need you to think about that. Here's the question. Chew on, are you submissive? And then are you obedient? And are you submissive and obedient to God? Right? That's how you stay under his protection. So if you make that line in the sand, I'm no longer going to be about what the enemy wants, not going to pay the tax, the price. Right? I want to be under the protection of God. Well, God's protection comes with submissiveness and obedience. We'll see you next time. Nightly Nonsense.